So we're going to have some weird angles because I'm actually working on my sewing area and I don't have a lot of space to show you everything at this particular angle. But I just wanted to first note that this is an embroidery design that you need to purchase. It's called Luggage Tags Set 2 by So Inspired by Bonnie and the website is www.soinspiredbybonnie.com. And I will make sure that I put a link down in the description box for you so you can have that. But on the supplies, they give you the list of supplies of everything that you need. So I'm going to next go into that. It says you need two pieces of fabric. And so I have two pieces of fabric and they're approximately five by six. And notice that you don't have to have these cut exactly to size. They can be a little smaller because you're going to actually be trimming in the hoop. And we'll talk about that when we get there. Then you're also going to need one piece of batting approximately five by six as well. One piece of vinyl. And I put the vinyl on top of the white just so you can see it. And it's four by five, again, approximate sizes. And then you're going to need about a 15 inch piece of ribbon so that you can use it to put on your tag so you can actually put it on something. You're going to need the mesh style of wash away stabilizer. You do not want to use the plastic kind because all of the satin stitches will end up making it fall out of the hoop and you don't want that to happen. So make sure that you use a mesh style wash away stabilizer. You're gonna need some kind of adhesive or stabilization to make your pieces lay in the hoop. And you can use a spray adhesive. You can use a washable glue stick where you're just putting it in the middle. But what I found is I didn't need to use any of the spray it any adhesives because what I did was I just backed my fabric with a piece of interfacing just the kind you put in your clothing and I found that it was stiff and then my fabric didn't move around as much and I'll show you that when I get there and again I even used up scrap pieces as well You're going to need, they recommend scotch tape, but I'm actually using masking tape. Scotch tape is one of those tapes that if you get, uh, if you stitch through it, you can just peel off the excess and it won't gum up your needle. But I'm using masking tape because it holds. And I'm not actually going to put this in any place where the needle would be. So I'm okay with the scotch masking tape. And... You're going to need, they recommend a stencil cutter, but what I actually use is just water and a paintbrush, and we'll get to that step toward the end. And then you need to have at least an embroidery hoop that is five by seven for this project. And you're gonna need to have some kind of a business card that you want to put inside of your back. You can make your own in Microsoft Word or any word processing software and just cut them down to size, but you can also just slide a business card in if you want. On this one, they actually recommend that you use Avery Clean Edge Business Cards, number 8869. It has eight cards per sheet, so you can print your own ID cards. So I will probably just make my own when I get to that step. So let's talk about some of the other things that I have here that they haven't said you will need. I like to use Fray Check. Whenever I'm going to cut open a buttonhole, I always put Fray Check on it, let it dry, and then I cut it. You're also going to need a seam ripper so that you can open up your buttonhole. You're also going to need some kind of scissors for trimming. These are your scissors that I would use when I'm trimming just my threads. 
but when I'm actually cutting around, I like to use the applique scissors and then it has this little beak that goes under and it prevents you from cutting through to the stabilizer. And this is a left-handed brand and they also mostly come in white, but you can search and find them in left-handed as well. And then at the end, you just want some scissors that you can use to trim out your piece from the stabilizer when you're done. So I will be going over all of these steps with you as we go along. First thing we need to do is to hoop our stabilizer. All I have done is just hooped one layer of stabilizer to fit my five by seven hoop. So now we're going to actually go to the embroidery machine. Okay. On this particular design, you have the option of using two threads. And for demonstration purposes, I'm only going to use one. But at that point, you're going to need to have to have matching bobbins. So I have already gone ahead and done a matching bobbin to match my top thread. Right now it's not needed, so I'm just going to sit it on my bobbin winder until it's needed. What's in my bobbin right now is just regular white embroidery thread. And then I have my machine threaded with my color thread. I could use white thread here until I get to the step where my stitches are actually going to show, but I just like to just go ahead and get everything started with the thread that I'm using. I have so much thread and thread needs to be replaced because it goes bad, so I'm okay with using a color thread for all of the steps. So I have my embroidery design here pulled up and I'm not sure if you can actually see that. But I have my luggage tag here and it has all of the steps listed over here. And those steps are not necessarily stitching steps. It might tell me, it might be a stop for me to trim some fabric out before it continues stitching. So we're not necessarily going to be changing threads like you would in a normal embroidery design. So. I've already got it set to sew. I want to make sure that my tension is at 3.6 and I am going to put my hoop on. The first thing I'm going to do is stitch out a placement line. So, and once it stitches, I will take it off the hoop so you can see it. And that's another reason that I'm using color thread instead of white for this demonstration because I need for you to see it on the camera. Now this first stop is not necessarily for thread change. It's actually for me to place something on the hoop. But I'm going to take it off so that you can see the stitching that has occurred. And I'm hoping that you can see the outline of the luggage tag there. So I basically just put this back. I'm going to put two things down at this time. I'm going to actually put down the batting and my top layer. Now at this point is where you would use spray adhesive to make sure that this stays in position. You would put spray adhesive on your batting, place it down here so that it covers your stitching. And then you will also put spray adhesive down on this top layer of fabric but because I have it stabilized I find that it's pretty stiff enough that it doesn't move and all I do is just hold my hand when I start stitching so I haven't used any spray adhesive or glue stick at this point and then I'm just going to drop my feed dogs and start stitching again I'll just place my hand down so that I can keep it from moving and just watch where it's stitching be careful if you are doing this because this interfacing is on here, it doesn't really move. And then it goes around and stitch a second time to ensure that if you cut the stitches, you've got another layer of stitches holding your piece in place. Now this stop, in the instructions, they tell you to trim 
away your top fabric and your batting. But what I like to do is go ahead and stitch any decorative to designs. They had other different decorative designs, but because we're using these as name tags, I took those decorative designs out and I just have our names or my name listed in it. We're actually using this for retreat, so I'm making this for everyone. And so I like to go ahead and stitch the names before I trim because that way any extra stress in here will not pull the fabric inward as I'm stitching. So that's going to be my next step. I'm going to stitch my name out. And this stitch out will take three minutes so I will not let you sit here and watch this machine so for three minutes. So now I have removed my hoop from the machine. The important thing here is to not remove your mesh, your stabilizer from the hoop. You want to keep everything in the hoop. And now it's time to actually trim all of the excess top fabric and batting off. And I just like to do it one layer at a time. I just put the beak of my scissors along the edge and just trim. Now I have the top piece completely trimmed off and now it's time for me to do the batting. Also at this time, I just go ahead and remove any connecting threads from my embroidery machine that weren't automatically cut. Just so I don't forget later, I could skip this step for right now. But I just like it to be pretty as I'm working on it. <laughs> okay. So now our next step is to place our backing piece on and I just turn it over and I just lay this on here flip this over and take it to my machine I don't need any spray adhesive you can put spray adhesive here and then just stick it down so I don't normally use any adhesive on the back I did put one row of the little glue stick on the back just in case but really this is so stiff that I just hold it in place underneath it sits on the bed of your machine and I just slide my hoop in place and it just sits right in position as soon as it starts stitching it's going to catch the bottom so it is not going to move so I don't think you need any spray adhesive especially if you're using the interfacing Otherwise, you could also use some of the masking tape that I have as well, just to hold your corners down. And it's going to go around twice to stabilize the back. So again, I'm going to remove my hoop, but not take my piece out of the hoop. And I want to trim this backing again. And I'm not going to show it to you this time. I'm just going to take it over here and trim. And now I have trim the back piece with the edge of the stitching I'm going to replace my hoop and now it's going to give me placement lines for where I want to add my vinyl So what just stitched was these two little placement lines for my vinyl. So on the back, you just want to line up the two ends of your vinyl with this particular mark. 
And so I know it's difficult for you to see, but I've got a piece of vinyl on this line and a piece of vinyl on that line. I'm going to go tape this and then I'll be right back. So here is my hoop with the edges of my vinyl taped down with the masking tape and then I'm just going to replace my hoop. And my tape is getting kind of old now. This is actually my last luggage tag. So hopefully it works. <laughs> so now it's just going to tack down my vinyl. And since it's plastic, it's only going to stitch it down once. So this inner line here is where it stitched down my vinyl. And then on the backing, you can see where I've used the white thread and it stitched down my vinyl. So there's two things I want to do now. And I tend to do this first one before I trim is that I go ahead and switch out this bobbin thread because I don't want to forget. Any remaining stitches that I'm doing will be shown on the finished product. And I did one in all white just to show you what it looks like if you don't change it out. It's not critical, but I just wanted you to see both ways. And then the next step now that I know I won't forget to change my bobbin is to go ahead and remove my tape. I sometimes just stick them onto the machine so that I know where they are. And now I want to go ahead and trim off this excess vinyl so on the back I now have my vinyl trim close to the edge the remaining stitches is going to now stitch this inner side here this might be an opportunity that if you wanted to use a different thread color you would now change your top and your bobbin thread to the same thread but on this case I'm going to only use one thread I'm using the same variegated thread so I'm just going to keep going now the machine is going to satin stitch over my vinyl and then it's also going to make a buttonhole so it does quite a few stabilizing stitches before it even starts doing the zigzag so this is the third time it has gone around And this fourth time it's going to do a zigzag, but not a satin stitch. So it's still in the stabilization mode. So it's a very well digitized design. And now it's doing the satin stitches. So I'm going to cut the camera here, come back when it's completed. It will have little arrow points on the ends here as well as a buttonhole. So we're just about to finish off this stitching is making the buttonhole stitch and I'm just going to take it out of the hoop so you can see what's been done so now we have all of the stitching that attached our vinyl on the back as well as this buttonhole and this is how it looks on the back and that's why you want to change your thread out so that you will have matching thread on the back the last step, which since I'm using the same thread, I didn't really have to take it off the machine. It's now going to zigzag around the outside edges and it's going to do that stabilizing again. It's going to stitch right along the edge of the luggage tag. So right along the top lines, it's going right back on there. And then it's going to go out about an eighth of an inch and stitch outside. So it's actually going to be stitching on the stabilizer. So now it's on the stabilizer stitching. 
So all of that batting that you saw, it's going to be enclosed in the satin stitches that are coming up. So you don't have to worry about trimming too, too close so that you uh, cut your stitches, but you do need to make sure that you're within at least one eighth of an inch. And now it's doing a zigzag to enclose both of those lines. It's actually zigzagging on top of the two lines that it just stitched. And so it's going back again, doing a second row of zigzagging. And then it will continue with the satin stitches after that. So I am not going to watch, have you watch the machine sew. So I'm just going to come back when this is finished. So here is our completed luggage tag. And I have not removed it out of the hoop, but I just wanted to show you how the corners are kind of pulled in. And if this had been the plastic type of wash away stabilizer, this would have torn out of the hoop because it wouldn't have been able to hold all of this in into the hoop. So now we can go ahead and remove this. And then I just take a pair of scissors and I just go ahead and go around like close but I stay about an eighth of an inch away because I don't want to accidentally clip any of these satin stitches out. So you can see that you, I still have the water soluble stabilizer here on the edges. Now for, this is one of those cases where I'm going to say do as I say and not as I do. My water has been sitting here now for about an hour, but I do like to use just hot tap water and it, the heat helps to make the stabilizer disappear a little faster. So, but my water has of course cooled down. This is my last luggage tag. So I am not going to go get more water for just the last one. So because my water isn't hot, I'm going to have to place a lot more water on my tag and I'm using a paintbrush. And then once I get enough water on it, I just tap the brush onto the sides and the water soluble stabilizer disappears off the edge they in the instructions tell you to use like a, a hot tool gun and I did try that but I found that I did not like those edges and I like that when this dries that my edges are going to be a little stiffer just from the little water that I put on so I actually prefer to just get a little paintbrush and just paint some water along the sides. Right. And so I've gone all the way around now and I'm just going to show it to you on the back and the front. It's very pretty. And my final step, which is not in the instructions as well, is I like to fray check anything that I'm going to cut open. Anytime I make buttonholes, I put fray check on. I put fray check on the back and the front of the project and then once it's cut it will prevent those fibers from fraying into the actual zigzag stitches and so now what I do is I just wait for this to dry and it could take maybe 30 minutes or so for it to dry it doesn't take very long and so I have one here that I've already done where I have gotten the stabilizer off the ends and I have also fray checked in the buttonhole area. It's not completely dry in the buttonhole area because it's only been about 15 minutes for this one. But I'm just going to go ahead and proceed to the next step so we can continue with this video. But let yours completely dry. And then if you are scared or nervous about 
you're going to slice through your satin stitches when you are using a seam ripper. One tip I have is to put a pin in the project so that you don't go th through the edge of your stitching down here and then you place your seam ripper in the bottom of the buttonhole and then you just cut up to your pin and that will keep you from slicing through the other edge of your actual buttonhole and so now the buttonhole is now open before we go to the final step of inserting our ribbon I just want to show you the difference in if you don't change out your bobbin thread if you use all white so on this one we have all of the color but on this one I left the bobbin thread white and I just use variegated thread to show you this because whites in the top so it wouldn't look totally bad but if you were using making a blue tag and you left the white in the bottom just know that your stitching will be that color as well so the next step is to put on a 15 inch piece of ribbon onto the back so i'm just going to switch to another luggage tag for that step because i don't have ribbon cut from for this one and again we're just going to go ahead and cut through this buttonhole this one has actually dried Now the first thing with our ribbon we're just going to fold it in half and we're just going to tie a knot. And then we're actually just going to go through the back. Open the ribbon up where the knot is, place it through, and just pull, and your knot should be on the back side of the luggage tag. If you need to do some adjustments, you can. And then when you want to put this onto your actual piece of luggage, let's just say that this is a handle then you would take this up through and take the entire tag through and install on your piece of luggage and so now you have your own luggage tag and don't forget to make your address cards I find that they are three and a half by two but you can again go back to the top of this video and I told you what number the instructions recommend in the Avery business card I just can't remember that number now but yes so this is <laughs> trying to get it off of the tape so this is my completed luggage tag and I do want to show you one other thing on this tag I actually put the stabilizer in my fabric on my fabric on both front and back on this tag I did not this tag does feel a little stiffer it's not that it doesn't stand up because it does but this one has a little bit more body so you can try to find any type of thin stabilizer even some thin Tim Tex or something like that if you want to stabilize with I think that would work as well and here are some of my other tags that I have done other color combinations
So these are the name tags slash luggage tags that I will be giving to the participants at the retreat. So this video will be going up a little late, but I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to do some other machine embroidery videos. If you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up this video and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.